First thing that everybody should be taking advantage of, we mentioned this a little bit in a previous episode, but the Google My Business descriptions are back. Local SEO Tactics, where each week we bring you actionable items and tips and tricks you can implement in your business to help get more exposure online. This week we're going to be going through just some little features and, and new releases in Google My Business, uh, some things you're going to want to pay attention to, um, new things that you can input in there to get more exposure, and kind of some features that most people aren't aware of that we've had a few questions on we're going to answer. So uh, stay tuned and we hope it helps you out. Hey guys, Jesse and Bob here. We want to talk to you real quick about Review Lead. Um, heard us plug this for the last few episodes on the show here. We want to make everybody aware of the special offer we got uh, for being part of our local SEO tactics audience. Uh, it's 150 bucks a month. If you go with the annual plan, it's actually even a little bit cheaper. You get 20% off of that, brings it down to 120 bucks a month. So super good value. You've heard us talk you know, over and over again about all the features and benefits of it. Uh, for you as a business owner, uh, it's pretty invaluable. If you're getting reviews for your business right now, you can double, triple, or even quadruple the amount of reviews that you're getting for your business just because it makes it so much easier for your customers to leave your review. Um, you have to do good service, right, to get a five-star review. Right. So we can't, you can't make something out of nothing here. Right. But um, if it's at all important to you, and it should be, um, te- check out this product, intrix.com slash review150. If you go to that review150 link, you're going to get that special discount. Check the blue, Click the blue button that you're going to see there. If you're not sure if this is right for you, we'll help you out. We'll show you what you're currently getting for reviews, what you're currently missing for reviews. And you can do the ROI yourself, you know, just like we tell everybody. Ask yourself for 150 bucks a month or 120 bucks if you go annual, what if I got one more customer? You know, or even worse, what if what if I lost a customer? Yeah. What's a, a lost customer worth here? It's a pretty easy ROI uh, when it's all said and done. You think about it like that. So check it out, intrix.com slash review one fifty. Let us know what you think. All right, that's about it for the promotions, and let's jump into the show. Welcome back to Local SEO Tactics. Jesse Dolan with Bob Brennan. Howdy. This week, we're going to talk to you about Google My Business, one of our favorite topics. We've done a few different episodes now about GMB, and uh, this is going to be you know, kind of a hodgepodge. We're going to go through a few different topics that are relevant to GMB, um, some of the more recent updates that have happened, and some things you just need to be aware of. So without further delay, we're just going to dig right in. First thing that everybody should be taking advantage of, we mentioned this a little bit in a previous episode, but the Google My Business descriptions are back. Uh, What that means for you is you now have a spot within your GMB listing to write, you know, essentially a couple paragraphs uh, about your business. As far as SEO goes, uh, this is great. This gives you, you know, chance to expand on what what you do for a business beyond just your GMB title um, and your categories as far as the information you can put out there. You can type text for, for what it is you actually do. You don't want to get crazy, you know, doing keyword stuffing on there and just, right. you know, what you do, comma, 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 you know, keyword, comma, keyword, comma, uh, like that. So write a write an actual paragraph, almost like an about us intro or, you know. Um, well, I was, I was going to ask you, should it kind of line up with your about us page? Because, I mean, if you're this on about us and then you're this on the description, does that cause conflict? Yeah, or? actually, yeah, great, great question. Uh, I wouldn't say that it causes conflict at all. That's probably great. Uh, one big thing with Google My Business and your website is kind of having synergy between the two, you know, letting Google know this is my website, this is my GMB, you know, this is what we do and kind of sending that same signal. Um, if you want to just straight up copy it verbatim, you know, copy paste it in there, I, I think you're completely fine. So you get 750 characters in your description. So I guess depending on how big your about us section is. Um, but yeah, absolutely. If you got a well-written about us and you think that that really communicates what it is that you do, um, don't be afraid to just copy that in there. This is the one spot, again, outside of those other fields and, and name descriptors that you get to communicate that. So make sure you're putting in there, you know, choose it wisely, um, list the services and the products you do, the area, um, geographic area that you represent and, and what you service. Um, and you might have to kind of wordsmith that a little bit, but this is this is great for SEOs. It's, it's just, you know, again, one more way for you to send those signals to Google and all the public out there for what it is that you do and um, hopefully get a little bit better rank on your, on your GMBs. So check that out. It's right in your, you log in your Google My Business, go to your info on the left-hand side, click on the tab that says info, where you can edit your business, you know, name, hours, all that kind of stuff. And uh, if you haven't done it before, you're going to see a little tab in there now, uh, a little field, I should say, that says description. Click on that and and start typing away. Um, Take advantage of that absolutely for sure. Another area you're going to take advantage of, this one's actually new. So the descriptions, that was something that was in there before, just to be clear. Right. It had been there for a long time, and then Google took it away. Um, now they're putting it back out. If you log into your GMB and you don't see it, 
Uh, don't dismay. Maybe check back, you know, every couple of weeks or whatever. Um, you should see that again. They're rolling that back out. Sometimes they put an update to the GMB and it's just boom, everybody. Sometimes it kind of gets rolled out or, or, or phased in. So if you don't see it, check back again. You're going to you're gonna see it eventually. Um, and in that same vein of, of how they roll it out, there's another new one uh, called Services. This is super cool. This is yeah. brand new. It's pretty um, exciting. Yeah, it's really exciting. And this is something you might not see yourself yet either. So same kind of logic there. If you're logging in, you're like, this is cool. Let me take advantage. Um, if you don't see it, again, check back. It's going to pop up. Um, this started rolling out about um, right around the beginning of May is really uh, when it started hitting. So I'm sorry. I said May. Uh, March. No, nope. Scratch all that. April. This all started rolling out about April. So it's still pretty new. Um, some people may not have it yet. But if you do get in there, we're going to kind of give you a real quick walkthrough on what it is because it's not like the descriptions where it's just one field. You put in information. This is this is something you can kind of build, you know, what your services are. So. I'm not going to throw it up on screen. I'm just going to walk through it. But we will we will load in some screenshots if you check the show notes page. Um, give you a real quick tutorial with some screenshots for what this is. But we're just going to kind of walk through it here. So the same thing, you're going to go to the info area within your GMB. Um, scroll down, you're going to see it kind of right under where it says your website and your phone number. Um, the B button that says services, add or edit items. If you click on that, First thing you're going to be able to do is add a section. So if you think about the services that you can offer, well, we talked before about maybe how to structure your homepage, right? Like um, your main menu links up top. If you're, um, again, an auto repair shop, it's you do brakes, you do oil changes, transmis transmissions, kind of things like that. Um, those are all like auto repair, right? So you don't have to have multiple sections necessarily, um, but just think about how you're going to organize these because you get two levels to input this. First is sections and then the actual item. So create your section. Uh, for each section name, you get 140 characters. So just kind of think about what that's going to be. And I would kind of treat that almost like uh, like an H1 tag or a headline. You know, this this is the name of a section. It should carry some weight within Google. This is all brand new. So there's not a lot of definitive answers out right. there for where does this show up? How does this show up? What does this even mean? Um, at, at the time of this podcast recording, we don't have all those answers. But here's what we do know. We're speculating with a lot of this, right? Absolutely speculating. Um Here's what we do know. This is new from Google <laughs> in your Google My Business listing. So, you know, take advantage of it, like, like we always say. So, But one would assume that this is tied in, again, with the structure of your site. So, yeah. you know, this the service listings, is that a, is that a, that's an opportunity, again, to list your, list your rates or yep. your specials or whatever it is that you do. So yep. if it's a transmission flush for $9.99 or whatever the deal is. Yep. Um, but it has to somehow, again, tie in with your site, with the structure of the site is, is, is the purpose, right? Yeah, just like we talked in a previous episode, um, when you choose your categories, you know, those should be kind of tied into your website using those as keywords. Um, really, we're thinking the same logic here, exactly like you're saying. These sections and then the services that you're going to list within each, sec each section uh, should match up with what you're putting on your website. And just continuing to send Google those signals and kind of syncing your GMB uh, with your website um, until something proves otherwise, we have no reason to believe this would be any different, right. you know, than that. It's again, it's put out by Google in your GMB for the purpose of understanding more what you do. Yeah. Link that up with your website. Um, have it kind of be that, that same content, same structure. So, um, again, hundred and yeah, 140 characters for your section name, put in the section, and um, then you can add an item and these items, just like Bob, you were just saying, you can l actually list the prices right in here too. Now you don't have to, it's optional. Uh, maybe if you want people to call you so you can kind of sell them on that price or, sure. you know, kind of talk them up or upsell them, whatever. So if you want to hide the price, you just leave it blank. You don't have to input a price, um, but you can put the name of the item. You get 140 characters for that as well. And I would say on these two, just a little um, kind of how, how you type it out typography here, structure your um, section names and your service titles uh, using capitalize the first letter, you know, of each word. Don't write it like a sentence you know, where you're capitalizing the very first letter um, and then going lowercase all the way through, they capitalize the first letter of each word um, just in case they start showing these. Let's say it's in the map pack and kind of everybody has their, their items listed in here. You want yours to pop out. Um, right. That's kind of true of really writing any headline or title anywhere in your website or in Google, uh, my business, follow that same structure here. Just just kind of a best practice, what we think. So. so some of the examples we've seen out there, you know, when we were kind of researching this earlier, I mean, it, you know, 
some people would put 10% off oil yep. change or whatever yep. the case is. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, some people were putting actual prices. Yep. You know, so they say, you know, $39 oil change or whatever the case is. Um, so if you just put, if you put prices, I think that's okay. I mean, it's, it's kind of, we don't want to be, um, accused of spamming or whatever the deal is. So you can't just say oil change. You probably should throw a price to it or, or, I mean, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. And again, this is just all speculation. So. Yeah. If you have a reason to not show the price, you know, that should be a good reason. But if you have no reason to not show a price, I mean, if you display the prices in your window, you know, or if you right. display the prices on your website or when you post on Facebook, you put a price out there, definitely don't hide this because right. um, think about it from the consumer standpoint. Let's just make the assumption that these are going to show up in the GMB. Um, if you search for oil change, you know, near me or whatever, three people are going to pop in the map pack. If two of them show a price of twenty nine ninety nine, and yours has no price, I'd be the last one called. Yeah, they're just going <laughs> to like twenty nine bucks. Okay, sure. You know what I mean? They right. make that that instant uh, connection to the price and the value, and you're not going to have a chance to sell them on the value of your your deal. Maybe maybe yours was nineteen ninety nine. Maybe yours was thirty nine ninety nine. Who knows? You're not going to get that chance. So, um, if you're scared to put a price just for the reason of you know, gosh, I don't know, should I put that out there? Yeah, make the assumption everybody else is. You're kind of competing in that same market. You know, you need to you need to see what that price is. Um, I can't think of a reason offhand and why you wouldn't want to, quite frankly, if, right. if that kind of stuff is already out there in your business. Uh, so again, item name, 140 characters, put your price. Um, and this is too, we should note when you're talking about like 10% off or whatever, you can put that kind of verbiage in the item name. Uh, that price field is just for the actual price. So you can't put 10% off as a quote price. Uh, you use just the actual US dollars in that price field. Right. Um, and if you want to leave it blank, again, that's your call, leave it blank. And then this is the other real cool part. You have a, a chance to type out the item description. And for this, you get a thousand characters. So, I mean, that's a ton. Like we talked just yeah. a little bit of the description for your business, you get 750. But for this item, you can put a thousand characters. So you really have a chance to elaborate on what this product or service is. Um, and we think it's just a great chance for SEO. Even if this takes a long time to actually get shown within the, the results on Google, this is all information you're still plugging into that Google database. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, again, we're purely speculating here, but if you're going to load in your products and services, um, a thousand characters for the descriptions and things like that, you're feeding a lot of information to Google for, for what it is that you do, what it is that you're selling and servicing. And uh, that's going to have some SEO impact, you know, for what you're showing up. Um, again, like we always say, all things being equal, if Bob and I, for example, have the exact same business um, and I'm doing this and he's not, I'm betting that I'm going to show up ahead of Bob because Google just knows that much more about me. I'm that much more of a legitimate business compared to him. They just have more signals to trust me and to, to show me to the end users, you know, as a viable option. So uh, definitely take advantage of this. Yeah. So they want to see, they want to see Google wants to see you're engaged. Right. Right. So, you know, if you're going to play, play the game, get in there and play it. Yep. And the more engaged you are, I think in theory, the, the better you're going to do on, on a lot of levels. Yeah. I mean, the map pack, along with, I assume, SEO. Yep. It's going to impact SEO to some degree. So load this up. Throw as much of your stuff in there as you can. Uh, right now in our limited testing that we've done, we're not seeing this result pop up, at least on desktop searches uh, for various products and services. Um, seen it a few times on mobile, which is kind of weird. So this is, uh, at the time of this recording, You know, this is just barely a month old as far as a thing that's out there for us to use. So Google's initially rolling it out you know, to business owners. Um, the second phase is really how they're going to show this information to the public. So, oh. um, by the time this actually hits, hits on the air, you know, maybe there's going to be a lot more, um, visibility out there. Um, but definitely check it out, do some searching on your desktop and in your phone for various products and services around town, uh, things that you represent, you know, maybe things that you don't and just kind of play with how this shows up, you know, and see what it looks like out there in the wild. That might help you understand, you know, how you want to type these things up, you know, and what you're going to want to say. Um, these things have to have a strong call to action, you know, just like any other offer or, or, uh, or headline you can put out there. So, um, so yeah, that's super cool. Uh, the GMB new services area, um, definitely take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, let's move on here to the next item. Something else as it relates to GMB sort of is, uh, there's been a change to the, uh, Google reviews. Um, they took down suddenly and kind of drastically all the anonymous reviews 
um, online. So what that means is if you go back a few years, uh, there was this thing at one time called uh, Google Plus. I don't know if anybody ever <laughs> remembers that. Uh, it was kind of force fed, but a lot of people use that. And you would you, that would kind of be your Google profile, right? When you're leaving reviews. Um, a lot of people had that be anonymous, right? Or, or maybe didn't fill it out. So some people woke up the next morning here recently, you know, maybe they had 120 reviews on their website. Boom, I got 89 or 79 or whatever. Um, just completely gone. You know, the star rating, you know, aggregation and the number of reviews as a quantity uh, were just gone. Google's doing that just because, uh, number one, to kind of fight uh, review spam uh, for fake reviews. Obviously, if you're somebody who is trying to kind of game the system, it's a lot easier to leave an anonymous review than it is a review with a name um, just for trackability and, you know, things like that. Um, but then also they kind of want it to be more transparent. You know, we talked before in a, a previous episode about how there's the new feature where Google will um, alert the person that left a review when you reply to that review. So they kind of want this business to person, real world, real people interaction. Right. Um, at least that's a lot of speculation uh, on why they removed it. So um, just be aware of that. Um, obviously for us, we recommend Review Lead. Um, it's a product that we have uh, for a solution to get more reviews. Uh, so if this has happened to you, um, or even obviously if you just want to bump your review numbers in general, check out a product like that. If you don't use our product, um, which you can find at intrix.com slash review 150. Um, if you don't use our product, um, check out something else because reviews are such an important thing, you know, in today's business. Um, you got to get as many reviews as you can. You got to knock customer socks off and you got to ask them for reviews as well. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes for the two previous episodes we've talked about getting reviews. Right. Uh, one with a product like review lead or some kind of automated software. And then the upper, other episode we talked about how to get them in person and how to get your team engaged, you know, to get more reviews. Um, extremely important and also important to know again that Google has stricken all anonymous reviews, you know, from the record. They just, they just don't exist anymore. So um, if you're unaware, if this has happened to you, go out there, check your profile, um, Google yourself or go to Google maps and, and search for yourself or obviously log into your GMB and check out your reviews. Um, and just take a peek. You know, it's important to know what your score is and how many reviews you've had um, in business nowadays because people make those decisions not only on how many star rankings, I'm sorry, what your ranking is for the number of stars, how many reviews you've had, and then also how recent they are. Right. Um, I think we've all been there, or if not, um, we're familiar with the situation where you see three businesses show up in the map pack. Maybe they're all pretty dang equal, you know, but one of them, it says last review is, you know, three months ago, you know, versus somebody who had one last week. Um, you're going to gravitate to the one that had one, you know, more recently. So, um, so if you're not getting reviews currently, um, definitely jump on board with that. Not to kind of get too far off, off topic here, but it's something we're pretty passionate about. Right. Um, something that really helps our business, our customers, businesses, and anybody listening to this. So, so we, we had a site we built and, uh, for a customer and, and, um, we did a lot of SEO to it and it got to the top, not only the top of natural SEO, but to the top of the Google map packs mm -hmm. and, uh, no reviews and their competitors, you know, had multiple reviews, nothing crazy. Yep. 3.8, maybe in around four yep. with maybe one or two reviews. Yeah. Nothing too crazy. So, you know, we encourage them. This was before, um, review lead, but we encourage them to get leads. He got two five-star leads reviews. and reviews. I'm yep. sorry. Yep, yep, yep. Five-star <laughs> reviews. <laughs> they turn into leads. They turn into leads. <laughs> But yeah, his lead count, you know, because this is all measured. Yep. So we put a phone number on it to make sure that yep. there's performance there tripled. Yep. So, I mean, that's how important it is. Yep. But then, within the course of a week here, we're talking to you, it's yeah. like noticeable. So, right. Yep. And and it's just tough. I think the older you are, <laughs> the more the more you, you know, just kind of roll your eyes at this kind of stuff. But yep. it's it's that critical. It's yeah. absolutely critical. that, And not because we're trying to sell a product. You've listened to our other previous podcasts. I can't implore you enough. You got to get these reviews on there. Yeah. Well, and we're not just hawking a product for review lead. Um, that's the solution, you know, that we ended up providing right. because we had a hole in our offerings. We said, I mean, people got to get reviews. We've been championing that. Um, and then we came across this as far as an easier way to do it. Right. Just, just to give everybody the clear context. Uh, we don't care if you use our product or not. But you definitely should be doing something to actively get reviews, and you should be using some kind of technology to make it easier for your customer, not just handing them a piece of paper, not just using the Mr. Rogers approach, which we outlined in a previous episode. Um, you, you need some technology to make this easier and to, to remind them to leave your review. So. Yeah, it, and, and not everybody, again, and not everybody has the moxie to say, hey, leave a review, and, and by the way, leave a good review right. <laughs> type of deal. This, this product, 
essentially does that for you. So it's yep. it's you know, so you can focus on whatever it is you want to focus on. Right. So. So that's that, not to get too far off tangent, but obviously you guys you guys know if you've been listening for a while, this is a very important topic, um, and we feel pretty strong about it. So uh, we got two more things related to Google My Business. I'm sorry, actually three. Um, one of them is something we haven't touched on before. This isn't new, uh, but it's something we've had a few questions on, and uh, we want to make sure everybody's aware of it. You can add multiple users to your GMB account. Um, so whether, you know, if you're a business owner out there and you want to engage with uh, an agency like us to maybe help you optimize your GMB or maybe take over some of the day-to-day operations of it, or, uh, if you're a business owner and maybe you have an assistant or somebody else you want to delegate that to within your office, um, you don't have to give them your Google login. You can actually invite them as a user. Um, there's different permissions and privileges you can give them so they can't just, you know, own it or take it away or do some drastic damage. Um, but they can maybe, you know, do some of the post updates or some of the stuff we're talking about today for the descriptions or services. Um, so it's on the left hand side, down towards the bottom, um, button that says users. You can click on that and you can invite anybody via email. Um, they do, they do have to have a Google account, right? Which, um, kind of should be expected if they're going to log in and and manage this. Um, so that's pretty cool. If you're, if you're not doing that, um, and you want to delegate some of that, um, that's, that's the way to do that. Um, another one is the Google, my business, uh, attributes. Uh, you can find this in your info section uh, for managing your profile. And the attributes is kind of a unique area where you can't just type in anything you want. Um, Google kind of offers these attributes to you. Uh, something that is new right now, um, at least as of March 2018, um, they launched this kind of in honor of... Uh, before I butcher the technical... Um, they launched this in honor of National... I'm sorry, International Women's Day, um, you can tag yourself with the attribute of a women-owned business. So if you are a women-owned business or women-run business, take advantage of it. Yeah. Like we always say, if Google's going to give you a signal or a criteria or a feature to utilize, take advantage of it. So um, so if you happen to be women-owned, women-run, uh, check it out in your attributes and, and make sure you tag that for yourself. You're going to you know, get credit for it. And if that matters to somebody when they're searching, you're going to get that exposure um, and it'll help you out. So... Uh, and then the last thing is really everybody in business should be having a Google My Business page. If you have a Google My Business page, you should stay up to date on what Google does to update or change the GMB. They actually have a link where they post these updates. So we're going to put a link to it in the show notes. It's kind of a long link, um, you know, not a very good one to say. So check out the show notes. We'll put a link to that in there. Um, so, yeah, you're going to want to check that out and just kind of put that on your list of something to check out once a month to, to see what new features are out there in the GMB space. You always want to be taking advantage of that. Yeah, that's you really want to go to the source. I mean, we yep. try to bring you the best information we can, but we can't bring you everything. Right. And that's that's going to be 100 percent accurate. So and you should know, too, like the services thing we're talking about. You're actually not going to see that on that GMB um, website. That's kind of an undercover thing. They're just kind of releasing it, which is why, oh, we're, really? yeah, why we're speculating. So things like the International Women's Day um, attribute and things like that, they'll put on there. Um, but some of these things they are kind of testing in certain markets or certain um, industry areas. You're not going to find that on there. That's where they officially, officially release things and communicate that. So um, you're still going to want to pay attention to either shows like ours or other you know, SEO-related industry deals um, to get some of these nuggets. Um, but if you want the actual official Google stuff, which you still do, I don't mean to uh, right. minimize that by right. any means, uh, check that out. So we'll put a link to that in the show notes for everybody. So that's about it for this week. Um, hope you guys are enjoying the show. Uh, if you are, uh, we'd love for you to leave us a review. Uh, we try to read a review each week here. So uh, we're going to do that here in a second. Um, if you're liking what we do, if you're getting some value in the show, we absolutely would love to hear it. And we'd love you to just kind of share uh, what it is that you're getting out of it. Go to intrix.com slash iTunes. Going to have you... It's going to show you some quick instructions on how to leave a review, um, and then going to take you over to iTunes to actually leave that review. So um, I should mention, too, somebody's, some people have been asking us, maybe you don't want to actually put your name out there um, and, and put your, your text out there for how you feel about it, but you want to help us out. You can leave a rating, too. Um, we haven't really talked about that. There's two ways you can kind of give us some, some credit in iTunes. You can leave us a star rating, which hopefully it's a five-star rating, um, and just leave it at that. Yep. And then you can also take the next step and actually leave a review. So um, if you do that, we'll, we'll read it on the show here and, and say thanks. We're going to do that here this week. We had a, a great review uh, from Dustin Stats, and that's D-U-S-T-I-N-S-T-A-A-T-S. Uh, he says, super helpful. Even from the first episode, this podcast is super helpful. I just started a Google My Business account using their insights from the first episode. A must listen for business owners. Um, yep. 
like we say each week, uh, this is the impact we're hoping to have. If you didn't know about GMB before and you got one now, you're actually, you've already got new business from it. I can almost guarantee that as long as you set it up the right way and kind of paid attention to what we were, what we were telling you there. It shouldn't have made an impact in your business. And that's what we're here to do is help you guys learn some things you might not have known about, uh, turn you on to some little tips and, and tactics that um, aren't necessarily too complicated, things you can execute yourself and uh, make an impact in your business. So um, again, if you're liking this, let us know, intrix.com slash iTunes, and we'd love to hear from you.